The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Talkin' Cowboys. Streaming live from the Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star in Frisco. Pollard streaks in! Streaks in! Touchdown! Parsons has second! Prescott keeps it! And he bangs it in for the touchdown! And now your hosts, Isaiah Stanback, Nick Harris, John Mashoda and Kyle Yeomans. It's a Friday edition of Talking Cowboys, which means it is a say it with your chest Friday inside the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star in Frisco. We've got Isaiah Stanback. That's right. We've got Nick Harris, Chris Beam in the back. I'm Kyle Yeomans. We have to get Josh Rodriguez oh, yeah. on the sounder. Rodriguez. Let's go. Let's go, baby. I was like, did you just skip Josh? Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did it on purpose. Eye okay. candy I, I, of the I know, podcast. I see, I see it now. I'm the Jimmy Garoppolo of the uh, mm. DallasCowboys.com. Now, I'm not very good at this, but I, I look good. good. <laughs> you guys both have Handsome guy. Do you have that hoodie, Nick? No, nah, so they were all wearing that on the sideline this yeah. past weekend. Mm-hmm. If, if anybody was watching the game, like every coach and every staffer, correct. And I'm looking down, and I'm just like, they look like a bunch of teddy bears on the sideline. Like it, it just looked like like comfy. It's like teddy bears, but it is cozy comfy. boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah cozy, cozy energy. Just, it, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's crazy because I'll, I'll wear a lot of the sideline, uh, <laughs> the sideline merch. I like it this year. I like the sideline merch. Yeah. And then every so often we'll get a security guard that's like, "What's up, coach?" And I'm like, uh, "All right, <laughs> you." Should just roll with it be like hey how you doing sir good morning <laughs> you're so calling cool, us huh? a teddy bear yeah the teddy bear crew <laughs> wow man hey shout out to all the veterans shout yes. out to all the veterans yep. uh, veterans day veterans day thank you let's say very the pledge much. of allegiance I'm, completely I'm, I'm with it uh, but, <laughs> I'm but thank you guys for your service greatly appreciate it greatly appreciate it yeah, salute to service all weekend they they had the huge presentation out at the national medal of honor museum They'll continue to salute to service uh, into this matchup against uh, the New York Giants on on Sunday afternoon. I mean, plenty to talk about in terms of Veterans Day and and, and what all that means and really all those that serve uh, near and far inside our, our armed forces. So uh, salute to the veterans, salute to the service all the way through. But um, let's get into some news and notes because we have key matchups. We have some predictions to make later in the show. And, of course, Nick Harris, you've got our news and notes. Yeah, absolutely. So we were able to uh, dive into the locker room yesterday for the first, really kind of the first time this week on Wednesday. It was uh, um, There weren't many people in the locker room because they had a walkthrough later in the day. But uh, we were able to catch up with a couple of players that are struggling. And um, uh, first off will be Terrence Steele. Uh, we've talked about this week just him allowing 12 pressures versus the Eagles, 28 total on the season. And um, he he was he, he wasn't necessarily grilled yesterday, but he was asked, you know, like, uh, what's going on, um, and specifically on allowing 12 pressures versus the Eagles. He said, "Learn from your mistakes. No one is harder on myself than myself. It's a learning experience." And then someone asked if his knee has been bothered him bothering him at all this season, and he said, "A little bit. I definitely had ups and downs, but it's been good overall." Um, I I know Terrence Steele comes from a military household, actually, and so he's he's. Um, when it comes to work ethic and putting in the work and everything like that, like it, you're going to be hard pressed to find a, a dude on this team who will put in more work. But whenever you're coming off of a major joint injury like that, it's it's kind of difficult to be able to expedite that process. And even though he was able to expedite getting back on the field, as far as getting used to being back on the field, I think that's just taking a little bit longer. I guess my question for you guys is, you know, Mike McCarthy always talks about it takes about a year for those joint injuries to fully, you know get used to being on the field and, and understanding like what your body is under this new format. What's your confidence level in 2024 on Terrence Steele at this moment? I have high confidence in Terrence Steele. I think he's fully capable. I think that, you know, I obviously from injuries myself, it just takes some time. Obviously, the mental aspect is hard. Uh, the physical is difficult within itself. And he's playing a very difficult position. Yep. And, um, you know, I think he's had a bad stretch. There's no excuses for it. It's just It just is what it is. Uh, he's on the field. He's capable. It's just a matter of him watching the film, going with, getting with his coaches, making the corrections, and playing better. 
You know, I don't I don't think that he's in a, a person that's going to make excuses for himself. Doesn't sound like he was yesterday. He's just sound like he was being real. You know, from time to time, his knee was bothering him. If you ask every single person on his roster, they have something that's bothering him. You know, that's, some, that's the thing about the NFL. You have to play through these things. Um, and you, unfortunately, you most people have bad stretches. You know, just some are just highlighted more than others. Yeah. I wouldn't even say that this injury is like the kryptonite for the man of steel. I think mm. that he had a bad game. Okay. And if you look at the other side, I mean, bars. But if you look at the other side, I mean, Tyron Smith played, you know, his best game of the season and probably the best game that we've seen from him in years. I just think that it's just another instance of where this offensive line is not totally complete. They have not been totally complete in a single game this year. Um, but I think. Yeah, coming off the injury, it's probably hard to just get back and, and fully be yep. Terrence Steele again. It's really interesting because even Mike McCarthy was asked about it. Like coming off of major injuries, and you can ask this to training staffs, to coaching staffs, guys are sometimes thrown right back into the mix before they need to be. Terrence Steele came back within eight months of his ACL injury. It was unbelievable, his recovery, his rehab, all of that sort. Is he 100%? Like you said, probably not because of a multitude of reasons, not just because of the ACL and because of the knee injury. It's because of some of the stuff that he probably picks up along the way here in 2023. So to to have the expectation of him being 100% healthy after that injury, after playing all games this year, every snap this year, I, I think his those expectations are maybe a little bit too high. As far as the longevity of Terrence Steele, the, the one thing that I'm concerned about is, I mean, if, if he can continue to stay healthy, right? I mean, he has the one major injury, but outside of that, can he remain healthy throughout the entirety of a season? We already see it on the opposite side with, Ter- or with, with Tyron Smith and what he can do. I, I feel like both of those things play a factor into it. Yeah, I don't I mean, I don't think about it any more than I think about anybody else being able to stay healthy. I think Terrence Steele, I think he's healthy. So when, at least when I say that he may not be 100%, yeah. I'm not referring to this health and his, and his capabilities. I'm referring to his technique. Do you think his technique has <clears throat> Do you think his te- technique has improved more over these last let's say 2 years than what we've seen growth wise from Tyler Smith in one year? Oh, no, but I will say last year is what earned Terrence Steele that contract. Okay. You know, before he got hurt. I agree. Um, and there were some really good things there, and he was stacking good days, stacking good reps, uh, had a run through like, I think it was like week four through eight last year. We were just like, all right, that right side is great. <laughs> um, but as far as as far as far Tyler Smith, I don't feel like there's a offensive lineman in the league you can point out right now that has taken as many steps as he has from the first time he's touched the field in 2022 week one to now. And he's playing on an all-pro level right now. Do you think his performance is sort of spotlighted by the contracts? Like, because yes, I feel absolutely. like I feel like a lot of people aren't necessarily um, criticizing Biotish's performance for from the Eagles game as well. I mean, like we're kind of overlooking that. Oh sure. no, I, no, I did not. I, mean, I, know, <laughs> I know you did, but it's, it's but definitely a different highlight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's a spotlight on him. He's on, sure. and he's on an island, right? He's yeah. on an island. It's it is what it is. I mean, you're playing a tackle, you're going to be highlighted. I mean, it's, every time. You know, you miss a block or you get beat. It's like a receiver dropping a ball. Like all mm-hmm. eyes are on you. Everybody's watching, oh, and you don't. Know, yeah, exactly. It's a little Tupac. I, I, I don't know if you said it earlier this week, but it's if if you have three bad plays out of forty, mm-hmm. out of forty, right. forty four passes or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, you, a, that's a bad, a bad day. Game. Yep. The margin for error is so slim. It's like a kicker. You know, a kicker can't miss. You know, three field goals. You'll be looking for another job. And we, we don't just have happen a kicker. Ha- Sorry, go ahead. Uh, we don't have a kicker that misses field goals. So oh, no, don't do yeah. that. Please don't knock do that. on wood. Just Please knock on wood. Where's our wood? Jeez, God, God, man. Man. Did we, we not learn anything guy. last you gotta, year? You got to figure that out. Did we not learn anything last year? <laughs> Um, what were you gonna say? Our, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, uh, just that um, I forgot it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our next news and note: Brandon Cooks. That's another one that's been struggling so far this season. Seventeen receptions for 165 yards in eight games, averaging just over 20 yards a game. Um, he was asked about his lack of production. He said, "I'm just gonna keep trusting it. That's just who I am. In my mind, it's about getting back to work. When it comes, it's gonna come, and I really do mean that. I really do." And uh, there was a lot of confidence that was just kind of coming off of 
Brandon Cooks during that interview, and somebody had asked him towards the end. He was like, um, you know, if CD is eventually going to uh, be bracketed, he's eventually going to have double coverage and to where they just try to take him out of the game. Do you feel like that will open up opportunities for you? And he says, if that happens, best believe three will be ready. So, mm. um, so yeah, I, I – We've talked. We talked about it yesterday about how there's a really good opportunity here in this game to be able to take those downfield shots with Brandon Cooks. Um, does he have his best game of the season so far? I know Isaiah's answer is yes because he said yesterday he's going over 100 yards. That's right, son. I almost want to make a bet with you on that, but oh, I'm not going to. Should we do the hot chip? Last bet? time we made Ooh, a bet. is this the hot chip is this, bet? Is this the hot chip bet? Ooh, I did a hot chip challenge. That was rough. It, well, not the Let's hot chip it. challenge, but just the sauce that you have that, that you apparently have at the crib. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So this All is right, so okay. under a hundred. Okay. I win. Okay. Over a hundred, you win. Okay. What if it's a hundred on the dot? Kyle has to do it. No, it's over. Right <laughs> sure. If it's a hundred on the dot, it's I'll a, do if it. If it's a push, right, we both not? do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. If it's two hundred yards, I'll do it with you. If, okay. you. if it's a push, all all of us do it. All right, so. we're doing it on Monday. Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, that's fine. Yes, sir. All right, here you go. Do you have a Do you have a tolerable palate? You, yeah, you, no. I know. I was gonna make any assumptions. <laughs> I was gonna make any assumptions, but absolutely. Okay. <laughs> good on you. Yeah, you yeah. making, <laughs> I was not making that, any that assumptions. Was safe. Well, well, that was yeah. safe. I don't want to make any assumptions, <laughs> Senor. I, like I said, you're good at basketball. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, God. And I'm good at the trombone. <laughs> All right. Somebody the, have to bring milk on Monday. I'm just letting them know. <laughs> oh just man. Because you know, one of us will be dying. Oh, Jeez. that's it's gonna fun. be fun. So we're doing it on Monday, or are we doing it next Friday? Friday. What are we doing? I don't know. You're oh, that's a good question. Well, we yeah, do it it let's be, do it next Friday. Let's do it yeah, next yeah, Friday. Do it next yeah. Friday. That'll, that'll be fun. Monday people want to actually hear what we have to say on, on, yeah, on yeah. this yeah. stuff. Because we're talking, talking, if you guys are talking about a loss, and just like, all right, anyway. All right, let's take you know. Oh, man. Yeah, that, that would not rough. be good. I, I that said this. very close to here. Those are good. <laughs> I said this uh, at, at some point, uh, or it was yesterday, if... if if this would be a loss, this out of the sixty-three pre and post game shows that we've ever done, it would be the saddest post game show we've ever done. If it's a loss, easily the um, most disappointing. But yeah. to that same note, whenever we had the two-two bet earlier this year yeah. on Joshua oh, Dobbs, so close. I, I remember Kyle. He was like, "It's probably a good thing he didn't run for seventy-five yards because they just lost a very embarrassing <laughs> yeah, game, and yeah, we're gonna yeah, walk yeah. in on Monday with two-two. Two 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 so I was like, "Yeah, that's probably." Hey, not and a great by the way, text it in, you guys. I don't know where they can possibly send us some, but anyways, if y'all want to shoot us some names and some hot sauces, or if y'all want to shoot yeah. us actually send us some hot sauce, now we should have next week for this bet. Da bomb. Look, Send man, I, I'm, I'm going to hit this hot but sauce we'll, place. We'll have it with Tostitos. Okay. Yes. Yes. There you go. Good job, okay, Josh. Well done. There. there you go, man. On the uh, plaza. <laughs> Talking Cowboys <laughs> podcast text line 817-290-3298. Give us a text. We already have one hot chip challenge. Let's go. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, they're I bomb. did that. I, yeah. I would you, rather you sent that in. No, I did the hot chip challenge. Oh, I know. But I only ate like half of it, though. Yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't do the. You full. were sweating. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, stop it. All right. Uh, Honestly, you, have you seen uh, Shaquille O'Neal do the hot chip challenge? Yes. <laughs> that, that that face, man. That, yeah. Uh, Beam Ray, is there somewhere they could sit? I don't know. I don't want to start that. Larry Murray, let's go. <laughs> like mail it in. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That That's might a be a little, might get a little too much <laughs> going on there. We have a PO box. No. <laughs> we actually have a mail room at the Star. No, do don't that. tell yeah, people I mean, that. They're man. just gonna. I mean, it's true. I'm not gonna give it out, but they do have it. It sounds like getting somebody in trouble <laughs> if they're trying to send like the bomb salsa. Yeah. They email like guys. What do I send? Da bomb. Russia. You didn't say bomb. I did. I said hmm. <laughs> the Brandon Cook's conversation, going back to that, <laughs> what, what initiated this whole thing. I liked what he had to say yesterday. He he wasn't upset. We thought we we had the the mindset of okay, if you're winning games, you're not catching passes. That's one thing. Nobody's going to speak up as long as you're winning games. But after a loss like it was against Philadelphia, I think both you and I looked at each other and we expected a guy. And Brandon Cooks, maybe not to speak up and speak out, yes, but within the organization, have a bit of discontent. It doesn't seem like there's any discontent there. At least just, publicly. just from publicly. what we could see, he's very from what we could see from a media standpoint. Yeah, he is very professional. I, I would be, it'd be very difficult for me to believe that he's unbothered by the fact that he's not getting the rock. Well, he's a just contender. From, just exactly. Right, so and it's not content. It's it's like no, I want to be involved. I want to contribute. Is I want to have an impact. Of course, right? there's no competitor. I, I, I can use a reference to my daughter again, and I told her I was like, hey, listen, 
we're paying for select sports, like mm-hmm. you know, like club sports. I'm yeah. like, if you're not having an impact on your team, then we don't need to. You don't need to play on that team. Mm-hmm. We can go to intramural. If you're not going to have an impact, why are we paying for you to play, right? So like, if you're not, if, if Brandon Cooks is not going to be in a position to have an impact, then why are you paying him so much money to be here, right? He's not. A, he's not a. He's not a detail. He's not a, a freaking clear out guy. I mean, that's what I'll call him. I'll call him clear out cooks, not because of his inabilities, but because of how they're utilizing him. Yeah. Right. Right. That's not a disrespect it's to not him. Every time he it's not his problem. He's very capable. He's winning. He already talked about how the much separation. the separation and he's the, we know he's still the best route runner, even though CeeDee Lamb's the best receiver right. on this team. He's the best route runner on this team. I would I would challenge that this year because I think CeeDee Lamb has been running some incredible out I, I agree. I mean, I, I would maybe challenge it this year. Going into it, I completely agree. I think Brandon, Brandon Cooks, Cooks is a samurai better. when it comes to route running. I think C.D. Lamb's there, too, now. I think he, I think he, I think, needs, I think he has the credit. I think are are has we a comparing nice route life. running between C.D. and Brandon Cooks? Because yes. I think they're night and day. And I think Brandon Cooks is a great route runner, but I think it's night and day C.D. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, I think, I think C.D. Day. is uh, I, he is But I think they're but you got to see the routes really that they are both running. I think with Brandon Cooks, every time he catches the ball, he's bracing for you know to get knocked out over the middle. You know? Uh, he did. He was asked yesterday, "How can you not be frustrated?" He said, "Being around the game long enough, you get these moments. When I say I'm not frustrated, I'm a veteran and I want to help and contribute, no mm-hmm. doubt. But getting frustrated, all that's going to do is affect your mental and Correct. go down a route that you don't want to go down. Route, get it? Um, that's the and there's a lot of truth there. The that's bars it. Yeah, thanks, yeah. bars. There's yeah. a lot of truth there. No, there is, and I. He's just very mature. That's a He's veteran a, answer. Veteran mature. If you ask him that in in New England back in 2016, I doubt he answers it the same way. I guess he was Kenny probably Pickens New that Orleans. Same question. Do you think he goes over 100 or under? I'm talking about Brandon Cooks this game. I would. I mean, right on the dot would be great, but I, I'd say over. I'm going to okay. take the over. <laughs> right on the dot. You just want us all to have hot sauce. I want us all to die. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say under, but there's a chance he goes over. I think it's close. You can't walk the line, Kyle. No, I'm saying under. Okay. That is the answer. Like, can I say it's over under. 90? Is that no? Or sp- I'm no, going 100. No. Okay. All right. I I'm saying I'll I'm saying you. it's under for sure. Okay. But I think the opportunities will be there. All right. okay. Against this defense, there there will be opportunities. Man man, I'm maybe. with Kyle. Kyle's right on a lot of things. Call him Kyle Yostradamus. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh man. You know what I mean? Wow. That was, that was wild. wild. Write down all these bars. I'm just, gonna just call, I'm just going to call this uh, this episode bars. Bars, <laughs> bars just all <laughs> <it>. <laughs> uh, uh, Last note. I, I had tweeted this out yesterday morning uh, just because I was, I was fiddling around with PFF. And um, I, I know we take PFF grades with uh, not necessarily a grain of salt because I think there is stock that you can put into it, but also it's not the end-all, be-all. But I was I was looking through. The Cowboys have 12 players that are in the top 10 of uh, their respective position rankings on PFF um, through Week 9. It's the most in the NFL by a, a long shot. The, the Miami Dolphins are second with nine players. So here we go. I'm, I'm going to run through them really quick. Tyler Smith is a third-ranked guard. Mm. Hunter Lipke, third-ranked fullback. <clears throat> Out of uh, how many? Ten. Uh, DeMarcus, <laughs> <laughs> DeMarcus Lawrence is top the— Top 30%. That doesn't yeah. get you accepted hey man, in it's colleges. Top 10. It's top 10. <laughs> DeMarcus Lawrence—it got me accepted. Hey, don't worry about it. Uh, DeMarcus Lawrence is fourth out of edge rushers. Deron Bland is fifth out of corners. CD is fifth out of receivers. Osa Digizua, this one surprised me, was fifth out of uh, all defensive tackles. Uh, Micah Parsons is sixth out of all edge rushers. Jake Ferguson is sixth out of all tight ends. Hmm. Tyron Smith, eighth out of all tackles. Dak Prescott, ninth out of all quarterbacks. Zach Martin, tenth out of all guards. And then Marquise Bell, tenth out of all linebackers. Um, the only positions that the Cowboys do not have a top 10 grade of player are running back, center, and safety. So I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of fun. Something I found yesterday. There's obviously a lot of guys that are playing really well on this team. And you would look at it on paper and see that it's, you know, probably one of the more complete teams in the NFL. But you look at the five and three. So uh, what's the most surprising there for you? <clears throat> for me, it was Osa Digizua being sixth out of all really? defensive tackles. It's not necessarily that I don't think he's not been playing well. I think he's been playing great. But sixth out of all, like, I think there was, I think it was 80 defensive tackles. Or it was 107 defensive tackles. Like, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's up there. That's upper echelon. That's, you know. Sounds like he wants to check. Sounds like he wants to check. That's, that's, that's maybe where we, 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 we maybe take Doesn't the. everybody, uh, though. That's maybe where we take the PFF with a grain of salt a little bit. I think he's more so like 15 or 20, you know, 15 to 20 defensive tackle, like top top seven. That's that's yeah, wild. I, he has been doing a lot in the run game. He had he started the season he's really been, well in the pass rush. Yeah, he was very disruptive. Where's Dexter Lawrence on that list? First, number one. In mm, fact, we'll talk about the next segment for sure. Wow, <laughs> that surprising. Yeah, that is surprising. It is surprising a little bit. Well, from what I've seen on film. 
Mm, Isaiah's really? doing. Mm, we're about yeah. to have you, a you Dexter a Lawrence yesterday. showdown. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm from what I've seen. He's. I was not impressive. At least yeah. the last few games that I that I broke down. Didn't see much. I mean, there's not I, like there's a lot of help around the guy. I know, but but, but wait till this rushing I mean, like, like he <laughs> he he depends heavily on his just his size. From lately, from what again, what I've seen, he's he wasn't disruptive. Like it wasn't somebody that I saw or that even remotely jumped off film. There's a I, I kind of dove into like what a PFF like what goes yeah. into a PFF grade last week, and so on every single play they grade negative two, negative one, one or two. Um, and that's like their grade for the play. And then at the end of the game, they have like a conversion scale to convert it back to 100. And that's how they end up coming down to like their conclusion. So maybe he just had a lot of two plays that didn't end up in tackles for loss or sacks or whatever. Mm, <laughs> it's all subjective. They have it is subjective. Uh, it's 1000%. A lot of subjective. former players that are that are given the ratings and they're they don't know what the schemes are. They don't know what responsibilities yeah, it's hard to are. Do so that. It's, it's all that's why you have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, in that regard. But uh, safe to say, he is a guy, no doubt. He's, He's somebody just that you better him. respect, absolutely. But from what I've been seeing lately, you know, he has not been showing up on film. I mean, mm-hmm. his technique has not been sound. Now he very well may just decide that he wants to go back to old Dexter Lawrence, you know, on Sunday. But again, what I've seen recently, not threatened. Mm. We're definitely going to dive into this next segment. Yeah. I just want to let y'all Let's know. Let's dive into <laughs> okay. it. All right. Let's take our first break. When we come back here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company, we will dive into Nick's key matchups and continue to take a look ahead to the Week 10 matchup with the New York Giants when we come back right after this. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Black Rifle Coffee Company serves premium coffee to people who love America. When you drink Black Rifle Coffee, you are directly supporting veterans, law enforcement, and first responders in your community. Black Rifle's expert roasters love coffee almost as much as Texas loves football, so it makes sense that America's Coffee partnered with America's team. Go online at BlackRifleCoffee.com and fuel up with the official coffee of the Dallas Cowboys. That's BlackRifleCoffee.com to fuel up today. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot Rowdy cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at BankofAmerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile bank. App only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks girl, better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. Back to Talking Cowboys. Back here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company. We are live from inside the SWBC studios at the Star in Frisco. This segment is brought to you by Invisalign, the official smile of the Dallas Cowboys. If you have hot sauce suggestions, the spiciest, hottest stuff you've ever had in your entire life, send it in. Cowboys podcast text line at 817-290-3298. Do it it now. Uh, We've got Kailitos Habanero Salsa as a suggestion from the 575. Doesn't sound hot enough. Uh, Okay, well, there's another suggestion. Young Guns traditional jalapeno salsa hot. Direct from the Hatch Valley in southern New Mexico. Not sure how widely available because it's outlawed in the DFW Metroplex. And that comes from Kent and Las Cruces. Ooh, I will drive to Las uh, Cruces, Kent, and I will ooh. buy it. <laughs> Just see if Kent will meet you, meet you halfway. You yeah, right. Like What's the sentence for FedEx hot real. sauce? 
Do what? What's the sentence for trafficking hot dogs? <laughs> that's, a great, that's a great That's a great question. That's I made up question. the outlaw part. Nate, he'll go drive out there for you. He's used to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nate, yeah, absolutely. Nate, Nate is already on his way, possibly. If, <laughs> uh, no, he's got a podcast here in a couple hours. I want to but... see Nate do the challenge, too, though. Oh, no. Ooh, oh, no. no. That would be great. We do. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of You things. might not want that. <laughs> The mental image I of Nate. I just think about this. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Send us your hottest hot sauce suggestions. 817-290-3298. All right. Nick Harris. I'm about to have to shed the hoodie, Bro, too. It's uh, hot in here. It's hot in here. Uh, Nick, what, what are guy. your key matchups? <laughs> uh, so we're going to start off. We may as well start off with what we left off with on the last segment, Dexter Lawrence. And I'm, I'm, he's going to go up against all three of these interior offensive linemen on Sunday. Uh, they move him around quite a bit in that interior. But the one that I want to be looking at the most is um, Tyler Biotish because I – I, obviously, there's we talked about it in the last segment as well. There's a little bit of lapse at times with Tyler Biotish, especially going up against stronger, bigger defensive tackles. So if he can hold his own against Dexter Lawrence in this game, then you know there's a really good opportunity that they get this running game going. I think that's the biggest catalyst towards it. But he's been dealing with injuries all season as well. Biotish has. Yeah, I mean he battled the hamstring earlier in the year, but you know he was on the injury report. As well, right? Yeah, but not this week. Oh, um, not this week. I, okay. I don't believe he was last. If he he popped up really late last week, but I, I it's if you're not on the field, worried. you're on the field, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, that that's uh, that doesn't yep. matter when contracts come around, you know. Boom! So. Shakalaka. Oof. What do you think? I, you know, I'm hard on Tyler Biotis. Yeah. Simply because I think that he's undersized. I think he's a try hard guy. I think that he is inf- effective. Wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> in a good way. I, I, in a good way. I think he's effective, but I don't. <laughs> Not a, I think in this division, hard. in this division, is difficult for him. I think this is a very is. difficult div- division for him to be a center first of all and to be an undersized center. Mm. So when I say a try hard guy, typically that's a negative, you know, term or a negative connotation. But not with him. I just believe that when he is faced with one on one matchups that he is going to struggle with dominant defensive linemen, especially that have some good size on him. So typically a Dexter Lawrence would be one of the guys that I would put in that category of a dominant large defensive lineman. But again, what I've, what he's put on film lately, maybe he's just turned it off because they suck right now. But – you know he's fully capable, obviously, of, of turning it back on. Every player is, you know, at this at this level. But Tyler Biotis, I was more concerned about him last week than I was than I am this week. Obviously, because I mean Dexter Lawrence, Jordan Davis, you could look at those guys and say, easily say, well, but history states that Dexter Lawrence is a better player than Jordan Davis. Okay, I would agree with that. But I think that what Jordan Davis, his size and what they do defensively, scheme wise, was more of an issue. For me, with Tyler Biotis going against him, then this week, which is just, just a traditional four three, where he's got where Tyler Biotis is going to have help. Hardly ever will he just be isoed against Dexter yeah. Lawrence. He's going to be able to have combo blocks either with Tyler Smith or with Zach Martin. Right? He's going to be perfectly fine. Um, Dexter Lawrence is having bad pad levels right now, so they can get up underneath him. His footing is not. He doesn't have a wide base. They can move him off the ball like. There's 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 room to have impact on him this week, and I'm not fearful this week about the matchup of Tyler Biotis because he's not going to be by himself. And Dexter Lawrence has also been a little bit more free-flowing since Leonard Williams has gone mm-hmm. out of the building. So uh, he's going to move all around. So yeah. if he does have a really bad rep, he'll get a couple couple reps off and yeah. then come right back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, second matchup that I want to highlight this week is uh, I, obviously any success that the Giants have on Sunday offensively is going to be in the running game. So I look at the best run defender on this defensive line, in my opinion, Demarcus Lawrence going up against Evan Neal. And Evan Neal has just had a rough year uh, at right tackle. Um, and I, I there's going to be a really good opportunity for Demarcus Lawrence to get into the backfield and not only stop the run, but also I, I want to see him have his best game of the year uh, this weekend. And it's you know, you look at the stats, and they, they you might be like, what? Oh, Demarcus Lawrence, he hasn't done anything this year. But he has been so disruptive yep. in, in that backfield. He's been one of the better edge rushers uh, in the NFC this season, um, and he's gotten a lot of praise in that area. I, I think there's a, a really good opportunity for him to get on the stat sheet this week, um, and I'm hoping that happens for him. If he continues to play, let's say this is, this is a, a long-term deal. If he plays at the level that he's playing at here, which is a high expectation because, like you said, he's still the best run defender on the team, in my opinion. 
if he does this for two or three more years, is he starting to enter into to Ring of Honor possible conversation for Demarcus Lawrence? I think it's hard to argue against it, but what he has against him is so many other great players. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he's just the, been so the consist- production is there, the, the consistency is there. Exactly, exactly that. He's he's a star, and he cleans up so much as far as. Uh, mess that we get on the defensive line and and being able to stop even though that's kind of been like our right, identity is not being able to stop the run he is the one that is there that is able to stop the run yeah because uh, right now he's not in that conversation it, nor no. nor should he be but two or three years down the road if he continues to play consistently like he has been and he's still around and he's still contributing at a high level i, I think at least it would be a conversation i guess the longevity has to be there for yes him. That's he's, the number one thing. He's in his tenth season, um, three Pro Bowls, zero All Pros. Hmm. I don't know how nah. much stock you put into that when it comes to Ring of Honor, but I don't know. Something to throw I there. do think he's an all-time Cowboys great, though. No doubt. I, I, yeah, he's I, a Cowboys I, legend. Yeah. 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 Totally. Just maybe not Ring of Honor. Yeah, you got to be Hall of Fame. And it's hard too, because I mean, it goes back to pressures and sacks, and yeah, I mean, so he's stats. Yeah, the, the, the stats right. aren't going to line up so for him. Guy. Yeah, but he is, um, stats are. You guys think he's the best run defender on the team? On the team? Yeah, I think so. Better than Jonathan Hankins. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So you guys, Jonathan you guys Hankins have, is a good player, but he's been playing really well he, this he year. He is a run defender, but it's it's Demarcus Lawrence by a hmm. mile for me. I mean, let's see how many times teams have tried to get outside and how Demarcus Lawrence is disrupting that this season. Yeah. Like it, it forces everything between the tackles, and then you run into Jonathan Hankins. Like it's, so if you I guys think are, it starts you, with Lawrence, and yeah. if it gets to that second level, Marquise Bell. I, I would. Yeah, he's playing he's around. Been awesome in the run game. What, that was what do you, really sorry, shocking. what do you see that makes the case more so for Jonathan Hankins over Demarcus Lawrence? I think because Jonathan Hankins is so disruptive on the interior, I think guys are they're trying to run outside. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like they're yeah. they're trying to get away from Hankins. Got it. And Osi Digizua is having a big impact in there as well, right? So that's his that's his ride or die partner right now in the interior. Yeah. So I think because of their influence on the in, on the inside, guys, they're the only place they can go is try to go outside, and that's when they're running into D Law. So it's a collective effort. Right. But I think if I was building a defense to stop the run, I think the first person on my on that roster I have to put Jonathan Hankins. It will. That's just from a scheme standpoint. I mean, that's and, because he fits influence. that role well. If you were to ask me which part of the run defense has seen the biggest improvement this year, I would say the def- defensive tackles. It would be Osa, it would be Jonathan Hankins, Neville Gallimore at times throughout the year. Those guys are the ones that have made the difference. But if you're talking individual effort and and ability from stopping the run, I would have to give it to Demarcus Lawrence. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. I mean I, I don't I mean I, I respect you guys' opinions on that, but I, I couldn't I can't say that because the issue that this team has had in terms of rush defense over the past few years is the offensive linemen having the ability to work up to the next level and get to the linebackers. And, per, and that's how they Because gashing. they were running away from Demarcus Lawrence. Mm-mm. It was the opposite but no, but, of what's But happening. I do think he's improved with his run defense. Oh, I know. O- Demar- the- I mean, don't get me wrong. My, my stance on this is not saying that D-Law is not impactful, nor is he a beast. But I just, saying, think, I just think Hankins that Hankins has more of an impact on, on this team, team right. in terms of stopping the run. I that's you. all I'm saying. I don't know if I disagree with you there, but, I, but because the conversation that, is who's the better run defender, Jonathan Hankins and Demarcus Lawrence. And to, to yeah, some I'm extent, that's orange. That's apples absolutely. and oranges. Absolutely. It's two different positions. Different roles. Yeah. Two different positions. Yeah, absolutely. Completely. That's, that's like that's, asking who's a better ball carrier, uh, yeah, but, Tony I mean, Pollard or CeeDee Lamb. But I think one of, the reasons, one of the reasons why you're seeing – why you're seeing a, a, the the uh, you know ascent of a Marquise Bell is because of guys like Jonathan Hankins. Now, these centers and yeah. guards can't get up to the next level, so you got guys at the second level that can fly around. I see your case. You know what I mean? So like, that's that's all I'm getting at. That's all I'm getting. At. I'm, but, but both of them are, are being, being very impactful. They this collectively this defense has shut down almost every run yep. rushing offense that they faced, um, and I'm hoping that that continues. You know, I Obviously, I was a big advocate of them adding another piece right next to Jonathan Hankins, even though Osa Digizua is still doing his thing. I would have loved to have seen them have a backup plan to what if Jonathan Hankins can't be there. Based off of what you just said, I know you're not a stats guy, but mm-hmm. this stat backs you up okay. 100%. Only 11 defenses have not allowed a 100-yard rusher this season. Only nine defenses have not allowed a 300-yard passer, and only two have not allowed a two 100-yard receiver. The Dallas Cowboys defense are the only team in the NFL that has not allowed any of those three statistics this year. They have not allowed a 100-yard rusher, nor a 300-yard passer, 
and not a single 100-yard receiver this year. That's pretty impressive. That's awesome. That's impressive. That means your defense is still doing its job. Yeah. Wait till it the Giants not... come to town. It... <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. Oh, man. <laughs> what if Jalen Hyatt just goes off for 100? Uh, part of me would love that, and part of me would hate that, because I was such a Jalen Hyatt truther going into the draft That's true. Process. I really like Jalen Hyatt. God. I... I... But DeVito, almost man, had the rose... put it up there for him, man. Almost had the Rose Clarence yesterday. I didn't get a chance because there's too much talking going on but mm. the uh he was like he was like the wide receivers coach over there didn't didn't like Jalen Hyatt in the draft process and I was like and he'd probably lurk him on this team right now yeah yeah probably, probably. like him in the probably. wide receiving probably. court right now but uh really quick on I just looked up Cowboys all-time sack leaders Demarcus Lawrence is sixth um and he's only two and a half way from being fourth but he's not even halfway to Demarcus Ware um and uh Michael Parsons is eighth he's already creeping but um Last matchup that we'll highlight this week is we've talked about Brandon Cooks ad nauseum this week. I think there's a really good opportunity, obviously, for him to take advantage of a young secondary. Mm. Um, so uh, Brandon Cooks versus whoever matches up with him, and it's either going to be Deontay Banks or Dory Jackson from rep to rep. He'll mm. see both of those guys at times. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's a really good opportunity for Brandon Cooks this week, I think. If he can get going, if he can push forward for a 100-yard game, I really hope that I am eating that chip next week. That boy's going to give him the sauce. Um, yeah, yeah, he's going to give him the sauce. We've got some other, we got some other uh, text lines in from that, too. By the way, f- Nate from Frisco says uh, 95 is better, point blank. He, if, he affects what happens at your linebacker position. So there's there's one vote. I don't know how much vote that one possibly. I mean, I don't know how much that one <laughs> how, holds. How does that I really? Mean, yeah. Come on. I mean, he only won six Pro Bowl honorees and Nate from Frisco, Nate Newton mm. from yeah. Frisco. Yeah, this is definitely Nate. <laughs> um, pure evil, pure evil. Thirteen million is a uh, is a suggestion. Pure evil. That's 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 the sounds, suggestion that for the hot, hot sauce. Arguably, sounds it sounds bad. pretty hot. Uh, flame th- flamethrower <laughs> candy. <laughs> It's hard to say. It's got, a tongue twister. This got hot even it's thinking about it. It's Gab's night. Flamethrower Candy Company, three pack of Lil Nitro, the world's hottest gummy bear. Yeah, no, I'm not doing a gummy bear. You're not bear. doing a gummy That's, bear? It's got pork in it. That sounds terrible. It's got pork in it. Can't eat it. Really? Yeah. You would eat. They got gelatin. Gelatin. You would have those hot sauces, but you wouldn't eat a that. hot gummy bear. Mm-mm. Okay, the gummy bear is going to get stuck, man. It's the gelatin. Mm-hmm. They, oh, it that's stays facts. in there. Yeah, it's going to stay that's in facts. there. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. All right, <laughs> let's take our second break. When we come back, we've got our pick em segment. We're going to update the standings. We have some shifting in the standings as well. We'll talk about it right after this. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Are you ready to take coffee off your grocery list forever? Black Rifle Coffee Club is here to help. As a coffee club member, you'll get your favorite coffees roasted, packaged, and shipped to your door free of charge on your preferred schedule. Set it, forget it, and never run low on coffee again. Members also get exclusive deals on coffee, products, and discounts from partner brands. Ease your mind and let Black Rifle worry about your coffee supply. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com to join the coffee club today. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at GetJackBlack.com slash Cowboys with the code CowboysVIP. That's Get Jack Black. Black.com slash Cowboys with the code CowboysVIP. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Back to Talking Cowboys. Cowboys. 
Back here on Talking Cowboys, presented by Black Rifle Coffee Company from the Star in Frisco. This portion of the show is brought to you by Quaker Oats, a super trusted superfood. Quaker Oats, official oatmeal sponsor of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm. The 972. I don't know if I like this text. Love to listen to this show and the insight. Lately, everyone seems to be getting off the point a lot and not talking about the Cowboys. We're talking about hot sauce that has to do with a Cowboys bet. If you listen to the whole show, you would like know for that. us to continue talking about the 32 worst ranked team in the yeah, league. Yeah, this is a podcast on an info dump. Boom! Ooh. Death by salsa, and it's not even close. Hottest thing I've ever had, and I am a hot sauce aficionado. Mm. aficionado. That's from the 317. That. Mm. Somebody uh, on the last episode on YouTube was like, "I can't with this cereal talk." <laughs> like he's like, "I," he's like, "You've lost." They're, they're me probably completely. lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> They're just angry Sorry. at the conversation. At least we're not smacking on cereal in the middle of it. I'm saying, Nick, no, they just, just saying. Just angry. Yeah. He was. He was. I can't have dry cinnamon toast crunch. Hey, we appreciate all of you that listen. Absolutely, we really do. Yeah. We Except appreciate the ones that every us. single one yeah. of you. If you hate us, that's okay. They have almond milk. <laughs> Stop. All right, let's update our pickup standings here it's on Talking Cowboys. Uh, Guys, it's going to be really hard for you guys to catch me if I keep winning these games. I was 6 and 0 for the second straight week. It's long season. Yo Stradamus. Second straight week I'm 6 and 0. Long season. Only and I through. didn't even have the records this week. Chris Beam did the record keeping in the back this week. It's okay, Kyle. I mean, so 6 I'm and 0 you're back to back. That's the first what, time we've ever had back to back perfect you know weeks. what success feels like now. It does. 13 and 3 is my record as I lead the way here, guys. I need you guys to cap, catch up. The fans are 5 games back. They are 30 and 18. Followed by Nick Harris, twenty nine and nineteen. They're one game. One you are one game back from the fans, and then one game back from Nick is John Machota, twenty eight and twenty. And then bringing up the rear right. out of the five that have done it all season long, Isaiah Stanback at twenty seven and twenty one. He went two and four last week. It was a rough week. Well, rough week. Josh in his debut last week went three and three, went an even five hundred. Let's go, Jason Garrett, baby. There, <laughs> Jason Garrett. <laughs> It's also what Kenton Las Cruces did last week. Three and three uh, was his final as well. And we've got our guest picker this week representing the fans who are currently in second place. The owner of still my favorite call in the history of this show. Josh from North Carolina. Josh, you were a school teacher out in North Carolina. You yep. had your class help last pick year. the last time, or a couple sh- calls a game, go, a couple calls ago. How's it going out there on the East Coast? I'm doing well, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Doing Good. great. Are Excellent. you with your class again? I am not. I'm actually, uh-huh. um, we're off today for Veterans Day, so I want to give a shout out to all our veterans out mm-hmm. there uh, protecting our country. So we're off today with our with our classes. That's awesome. Well, you called in at the right time. Salute, my friend. We'll get things started off. The Colts at the Texans. Mm. C.J. Stroud's been balling. Balling. 470 yards last week. Isaiah, what do you think this time around? I am going with Nor Brown. Noah Brown and the Houston Texans, number one receiver out there. What do you think, Nick Harris? You said you said Colts and Texans. Colts and Colts? Texans. That is the not the Texans week. are playing the Bengals this week. Boo! Uh-oh. Oh, oh Colts, sorry, Party Colts and foul. Patriots. Colts, Patriots. Colts and Patriots. Wow. I just wrote it down wrong. Oh man! Yep, that's on me, guys. Wow. Sorry, everybody. Somebody yeah, trying to s- shift the standing. <laughs> 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 I wonder uh, why I go six and zero every week. Colts and Patriots. Patriots at home and two and seven, uh, but they're not really at home. They're across the pond on NFL Network. So it's the Patriots. And the Colts, and there are some rumors around Bill Belichick's future, your former head coach. What do you think about that? I'm going with the horseshoes. Horseshoes to beat the Patriots? Bill Belichick's time ending in New England? Did you see the ring video of Bill Belichick? No. Oh. oh. What did he do? I'll show it to you guys. Uh oh. I'm taking the Colts. Colts. (laughs) Patriots. I gotta Patriots. go with Patriots. Yeah, Bill Belichick. Uh, I'm gonna take the Pats as well on the road. They they kind of need. They've got some de- desperation there. Josh, what do you think? Uh, boys and I, we're gonna go with the Colts. Going with the Colts. All right, 49ers at the Jaguars. This is interesting. This Jaguars. is a fun one. This is one. an interesting <clears throat> one. Five and three, San Francisco on the road against six and two, Jacksonville. Nick, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, I don't think the Niners lose four in a row, especially coming out of the bye week. I think they're going to be able to readjust, and they're getting Debo Samuel back. It sounds like I think they go on the road and meet Jacksonville. Mm. Josh, what do you think? Is it at, is it at Jacksonville? It is at Jacksonville. 
Uh, I believe in Doug Peterson. Let's go ja- Jacksonville. Josh, what do you think? Kyle, what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? Yeah. Uh, I'll take I'll take Jacksonville. I think I'm going to go with Jacksonville as well. <laughs> Are you just trying to, you trying to piggyback here? Yosemite Thomas. Trust me, Thomas. Isaiah. Duval. Really? I'm on the island over here? Okay. San Francisco. Get a game. Yeah. Congratulations on that game. Yeah, you probably got it. Their I'm defense is nice. It. New Orleans, Thanks. five and four <laughs> against five and four of Minnesota. Vikings at home. We'll start with Josh Rodriguez. Uh, can you say it again? Sorry, one more Saints time. Saints at Vikings, both at five and four. Saints at Vikings. Oh, Joshua Dobbs time. Ooh, Joshua Dobbs. Isaiah, you like Josh Dobbs. I love Josh Dobbs, but I don't think that they win this game. Hmm. Mm. That's unfortunate. Um, I, I think I, I, I'm going to take the Vikings here. I, I just really love what they've put together even outside of Josh Dobbs. And then when you add a presence like Josh Dobbs into that locker room and the win a that they have gamer. last week. Yeah, I think they're, they're going to make a playoff run this year. Or make it to the playoffs, not a playoff run. Make it to the playoffs. But I'm going to take the Vikings. Okay. Uh, Josh, what do you think? We. Go ahead, Ace. What do you think? Vikings. The Vikings. Very nice. I, I like that. You had you said that with confidence. <laughs> it, it makes my pick for me. Go Vikings. I'm going to get my Minnesota to get the job done. School. All Damn right. Dream. Titans and Buccaneers. Both teams with three wins, five losses. This one's at noon on CBS. I'll start this one out. I'm going to take... Baker Mayfield and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home. Josh, what do you think? I mean, I'm not copying you this time, but <laughs> definitely going with Baker Mayfield on this one. Isaiah? Bucks. I like that quarterback in, over there in Tennessee. Malik Willis? No, Will Levis. Not. Will Levis? Yeah. I'm, I might take Tennessee on this one. Taking Tennessee. I like what I saw to him. I'm going to follow <clears> that up as well. Let me take the Titans there on the road yeah. to go to, into Tampa. Josh. We're going to go with the Buccaneers. Buccaneers. Yeah, Buccaneers. All right. Uh, the Jets at the Raiders. Ooh. Why? Because they're both <laughs> Why? possibly – I'm trying to pick the most even games You're possible. Fine. You're fine. It was more so me. Like, <laughs> Why? Why, Why is this a game? <laughs> uh, this is also – oh, man, this is Sunday night football. Nice. Yeah, this was oh. supposed to be like Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams' like reunion tour game. But Gross. Man, that didn't happen. Uh, Aaron Rodgers out. still might play. Who knows? Yeah, he might be back in like two weeks. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nick, we'll start with you on this one. <laughs> I'll take um, – Gosh, I don't really know what to think of the Raiders right now, especially after just getting blown out by the Bears and then beating the Giants like they did last week. I, I So I, I'm going to take the Jets just because I think their defense will be able to hold firmer. Jets at Raiders. Hmm. I do think the Jets' defense is better, but I, I'll take the Raiders at home to get it done, Isaiah. Slot machines. Slot machines. Slot machines. <clears throat> no, break out the cigars. It's, it's, uh, it's going to be the Raiders. Yeah. Josh, what do you think? The Jets. Good pick. J-E-T-S. Good pick. All right. Giants at Cowboys, 325 in the afternoon on Sunday. Isaiah Stanback will be out on the plaza, 2 p.m. Mm. Central for Cowboys pregame cool. live through. We've got a big-time matchup. Maybe not in terms of a, mm, a game, a great game, but still one where, of course, you can learn a lot about this Cowboys team. Nice. Josh, what you think about it? We're going to go with our Cowboys. We're going to go 35-3. to three. Ooh, I like it. 35-3. Josh, thanks as always for the support. Thanks for yes, calling in and continuing to get the kiddos involved. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Bye. you. Bye. Bye. See you later. Josh in North Carolina representing the fans. We'll let Josh in Frisco, Texas. Let's go. Um, we're going to go with the Cowboys, obviously. I don't think there's any – I there's no way – we lose this game, right? No. Mm. Right? No mm. way. Saying the only this, time you said that was against Arizona. Go ahead. <clears throat> That's the only but, thing but that Arizona gives me pause. Always, Arizona's always a weird game. Mm. It's always a weird and game. And the rivalry games aren't? Not for the Giants. Mm-hmm. Not not of the past, I don't know, five years mm. against the Giants. 11 of or 12 of 13, right? Mm. Uh, Let me go Cowboys 38 to 6. Oh, they get 6. 38 to 6. Hmm. Go okay. Isaiah next. Isaiah. <gasps> I'm going with Brandon Cooks for 127 yards. Uh, if he hits 127, two touchdowns. He's um, and, and two touchdowns. Two Nick's touchdowns. got to do twice yeah. as much yeah. hot sauce. Yeah. Never said that. Both in the first <laughs> half. Both you in the shook, first you half. shook on it. We all saw it. Both in the first half. Um, yeah, so Both I, in the first half. Yeah, first half. 127 oh yards. First wow. half. Brandon Cooks. Um, awesome. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> um, let's go 42 17. 
42-17. Man, you think Tommy DeVito gets 17 points on this Cowboys defense? Look, the way I see this, I think this is a trap game coming off of the Eagles. It's a trap! Um, you got the lead course of this thing? And <laughs> no, he ain't going that crazy. I the running game is obviously going to be he- leaned on pretty heavily with Saquon Barkley, and the last time that you know I kind of felt this way was going into the Cardinals game. Mm. So guys, I'm going to have to take the Cowboys. Know, yeah, yeah, it was not <laughs> no, not so fast. It was like 41 13. We'll we'll call it that. 41 yep. 13. I'll say Dallas 42, Giants nothing. Yeah, I don't think they score. Could you imagine? 82 nothing? 82 nothing over the course of two games? That'd be nuts. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I'll say it's my pick. I just don't think this Giants team's very good. I think the Cowboys should destroy them, and it's, <clears throat> it's done. Moving on, going into next week and getting ready for uh, the Carolina Panthers, who had a rough game on Thursday Night Football. But they have a long week ahead of them. So, All right. That does it for us here on Talking we, Cowboys. We have some pod, pod picks. We do have pod picks. Okay, We've got pod picks. Who is the first one? Uh, Beam, it's the first one to get a sack, correct? First player to get a sack. First, any team. First player team. on either team to get a sack. First player. Demarcus Lawrence, then. D-Law. Yeah, I'm going I'm to ride my uh, analysis in the second second segment. All right. Micah. I just got to steal that. Sorry. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I was thinking, if nobody else was going to do, do it, I was going to do it. Yeah, average answer. Mid-answer. But. Bosa. Oh, uh, mm. Man, I kind of want to like go out on a limb and just like do a weird one, just in case it hits. Donovan Bell. Wilson. No, Mozzie Smith. <laughs> <laughs> you lost Isaiah on that one. Why not? With the Why mic not? throw. Why not? Why not? Did anybody have Kenneth Gainwell scoring the first touchdown last week? No Absolutely not. So I'm going to go a little weird here. I'm going to go with Mozzie Smith to get it done. We'll put something on it. No, I don't want to put anything on it. <laughs> Another hot chip. <laughs> Two hot <No>. chips. <laughs> All stuff. right. Uh, 2 p.m. Central Time kickoff for uh, pregame live out at the stadium. If you guys got you, tickets to the game, come through. Yes, come on through. We would love to come say hi. We've got some freebies we'll be giving out, possibly some T-shirts, maybe some, some gift cards, things well, like that. It's going to be nice. It's going to be a great weather. It's going to be nice and chilly. Just a little chilly, yeah, though. Not 60, too chilly. Like 60. Out there on the plaza, yeah. Cowboys pregame live, 2 p.m. is when that gets kicked off. Of course, the game at 325 on Fox. For Chris Beam, Isaiah Stanback, Josh Rodriguez, Nick Harris, I'm Kyle Yeoman saying so long from the star in Frisco. Thanks for joining us this week on Talking Cowboys. Go boys! This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!